Version CS5 introduced some improvements to the stroke panel in Illustrator. One of these improvements was the ability to align dashed strokes in the corners of a path. With this functionality, you can use the stroke panel to create dotted borders and scalloped borders for your paths that have symmetrical corners. In previous versions of Illustrator, you'd need to create a pattern brush to achieve corner alignment from dashed strokes. So to begin, I'll draw a rectangle with the rectangle tool, the shortcut is M, and give it a stroke and no fill. Now to make this border in the stroke panel, set the stroke weight to 30 points. Then choose the round cap option and just leave the other options at the default and then check dashed line. With the dashed line options visible, you can click the right hand icon aligns dashes to corners and path ends. So this is the feature added in CS5. Set your first dash size to zero points and this will make your dash appear circular because it's made up of two round end caps with no dash length in between. Then set your first gap size to 29 points so that's one point lower than your stroke weight. Leave the other dash and gap boxes empty here. This setting gives your dashes a close fit so there's no space between them. And you can use the same formula for any size stroke weight. Just make the gap measurement a bit lower than the stroke weight. Now let's look at the appearance panel so we can turn this rectangle into a more complete decorative element. I talk about the appearance panel in my Holly Shop class and also in another one of my free tutorials about the rounded corner effect in Illustrator. I love working with the appearance panel because it's kind of like a layers panel for individual paths and it opens up some possibilities of what you can do with your paths. So I have my path with the border stroke selected and you can see its thumbnail here at the top of the panel. And first I want to change its stroke color. So I can just click this swatch here and get a mini drop down swatches menu. And then I can also click the stroke link here to get access to the stroke panel right here in the appearance panel in case I need to make some adjustments there. So this is a very centralized location for making edits. And I should say these links and menus in the appearance panel are only in CS4 and later versions. For CS3 users the appearance panel is still functional it just improved starting in version CS4. Now our path doesn't yet have a fill color so I'm going to choose a color for the fill. And next I'll take the fill, click it and it's selected now and then drag it up just above the stroke. So you can drag the stroke and the fill around in this panel to change their stacking order just like you would in the layers panel. You can even add additional strokes and fills in this panel too. And so as you can see now on the artboard the fill is appearing on top of the stroke. So now we can only see half of this dotted border and it really takes on the appearance of a scalloped border. So the appearance panel allows you to manipulate the stacking order of the attributes on a path. And in outline mode we can see that underneath it all this is just a rectangular path. From here I can draw more shapes with the same fill and border appearance but watch when I draw this next rectangle and it, see it's not quite right. I don't have the fill overlapping the stroke and instead my dotted stroke is sitting on top of my fill and this is the default of course in Illustrator strokes on top of fills. So we need to go up to the appearance panel options menu and look at this option here. New art has basic appearance and here it's checked meaning that every new path we draw once we've set up that appearance, every new path we draw will have a basic appearance. So just a fill and a stroke, like this shape, but nothing more complex. No transparency, no drop shadows, no complex stacking order like this one where we have a fill on top of the stroke and no corner alignment of the dashed border like we see here. So back to the appearance panel options. If you leave this unchecked, meaning you don't want a basic appearance, you actually want the complexity, then with that option unchecked I can go back to my artboard, delete the shape that I don't want, select the one with the appearance I do want, and then draw a new shape and now I've got the scalloped border appearance. So that's an important option to be aware of. New art has basic appearance and that again is in the options menu of the appearance panel. 
So from here with this shape, you can get even more complex here in the appearance panel. You can add a drop shadow to the whole object. You could add a drop shadow to just the fill. So you could see the shadow casting on the scallop border. The appearance panel really gives you lots of options. So if you want to save this scalloped border appearance to apply to other shapes later, you can save it as a graphic style. To do this, select the path with the style you want to save, and then go over to the Graphic Styles panel and click the New Style icon at the bottom of the panel. And now you can see the thumbnail for the style here in the Graphic Styles panel. If you've taken my Illustrator classes, we talk a lot about saving color swatches and patterns and gradient swatches and even brushes to the panel libraries. And the Graphic Styles panel is really the same in that respect. So I'm not going to go into any more depth about that in this tutorial, but let's apply the new style to another object. I'll draw an ellipse this time. Okay, and now with the shape selected, I'll click the thumbnail on the Graphic Styles panel. And now I've applied the scalloped border style to my ellipse. Now let me undo that and let's say I want to keep the original fill color that I already had on this ellipse and I just want to apply this style in addition to what I already have set for the shape. Then hold down Option or Alt as you click on the Graphic Styles thumbnail and that way you're adding it to the current appearance of the ellipse. It doesn't override, it just adds on. So that's using Option or Alt. Now you can see in the appearance panel the old fill is still there. It's underneath the new one and I can use the eyeball icon here to turn that off and on temporarily. To get rid of this extra fill altogether, just click on it so it's highlighted in blue and then hit the trash icon at the bottom of the panel. Okay, so we've used the stroke panel to create this nifty dotted stroke and we used the appearance panel to make it look like a scalloped border. And finally, we saved that appearance as a graphic style. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.